Hello, this is Ivan, how's it going? And I am going to tell you about how to finish setting up A2Cloud. There is um, two other videos that I'm hoping you've already watched. It, this is the last piece of the getting going. And what you now need is the A2Cloud startup disk. And you're in a bit of a chicken and egg situation because you need the disk to access the virtual drive, but you don't yet have the disk. So if you have ADT Pro, that's actually what you need, and, you, and you've already got that on a disk, you can just skip most of this video. You can skip to near the end of it. And, um, but I'm going to assume that you don't. And since you don't, you're going to need to do a process called bootstrapping. Bootstrapping presents a complication because to make it work, you're gonna need a keyboard and a mouse and a USB serial adapter, that's what's in the lower USB port there of the Raspberry Pi. And if each of those things is a USB device, that's three USB ports and the Raspberry Pi only has two. So the way to solve that problem is, there's a few ways. One way is to do what I've done, which is I'm actually using a wireless keyboard and mouse set, and they go to a single receiver, which is in the upper USB port. You could also plug in a USB hub and put that in the upper USB port and leave the USB to serial adapter in the lower USB port and put the keyboard and mouse in the upper USB uh, in the hub. And, uh, the, and in all cases, the USB to serial adapter in the lower USB port should be connected to the modem port or slot two of the Apple II. Um, you can also do this entirely without a screen and keyboard or mouse. Uh, by using another computer's remote desktop software, and there's uh, instructions on how to do that on the A2Cloud website at apple2.ivanx.com slash a2cloud. I'm, that's a perfectly good solution. Again, you don't need a keyboard or screen or mouse attached to your Pi. Um, and, but I'm going to assume that in this video that that's what you do have and that you have figured out a way to get a keyboard and mouse and USB to serial adapter in the lower port, again, connected to slot two or printer or modem port of the Apple II. All right, so here you are, you've started up your Raspberry Pi, you wanna log in, again, username is Pi, password is Raspberry, unless you started from A2 server, in which case the uh, password is Apple II. And here we are at the prompt. Now, you need the Raspbian desktop, which you get by typing start X. So we're gonna wait for that to show up. There it is, look, cute, raspberry. Okay, once you've got the desktop up, what you wanna do is fire up LX Terminal. Which actually, there we go, okay. Now then, once you've got LX Terminal open, you wanna type adtpro.sh space serial. What that's gonna do is it's gonna start the uh, ADT Pro server software, but with its graphical interface, which is what we need for bootstrapping. So it'll come up in a few seconds. There it is. Okay. And then you wait for a few more seconds and you'll see it sort of clicks the serial button by itself and then the bootstrapping menu comes alive. So you need to go to the bootstrapping menu and choose the first item, ProDOS, and the first item in that, Speedy Boot, because everybody loves a Speedy Boot. And it will give you instructions what you need to follow in this box. What the instructions are telling you to do is to turn on your Apple II and press reset before any DOS can load. Then type IN number two, return. Then type control A, one, zero, B. Once you've done that, you click OK over here and you, we will see what happens. All right, I'm gonna move the camera over to the Apple II so that you can see what happens when we do all this. All right, so bear with me a moment. Mm, how's that? Good? Pretty good? Good enough? I can say it's good enough. What do you say? All right, now then, Apple II on, control reset, IN number two, control A, you will see a blinking question mark if you're actually on an Apple IIe with a super serial card, you'll see like a full prompt that says Apple SSC. On a 2GS or a 2C, you will just see the blinking question mark. Type 10B, after you type the B, the question mark will go away. Then, all you gotta do is click OK over on the Raspberry Pi. You will take my word for it that that's what I'm doing. 
because um, I don't want to move the camera again, but that's what I'm doing. Okay. And now, watch what happens. What we've done is we've told the super serial card to uh, accept input from the modem port, or slot 2, as though it were being typed at the keyboard. And what's happening now is the Raspberry Pi is quote unquote typing the um, code, the program necessary to get ADT Pro loaded into the machine's memory so that you can then use it to transfer. So I really got to give major kudos to, um, when you get to this screen where it says loading MLI, nothing may appear to happen for a good long while and you need to just be patient. Eventually, you will, here, I'll move my head in the way so you can see what it's supposed to say, loading MLI, uh-huh. So you just got to be patient while this uh, does, appears to do nothing, and eventually it will come up with a flashing series of characters. Um, so anyway, what I was about to say is I got to give major props to David Schmidt, not only for developing ADT Pro and VS Drive, but this bootstrapping process actually really solves the chicken and egg problem very elegantly. All right, there we go. It That took a good long while, but it eventually kicked in, and it seems that it always does. I don't know why it sometimes takes such a long time, but it does. All right, so in any event, it loads through its various phases, and then boom, we're in ADT. And now, because we're in ADT, we can actually transfer ADT and VS Drive and the rest of the A2 Cloud disk. So you're going to need a blank disk like that. You know what they look like. Now, to show you, put it in the drive, and to show you what you're going to see, if you type dir, this shows you all the disk images that are on the Raspberry Pi that can be transferred. Uh, the ones that we care about are a2cloud.dsk and a2cloud.hdv. And we're going to type receive. Now, if you have a 3.5-inch disk, you can do a2cloud.hdv, which has pro term and more utilities. Um, if you have a five and a quarter inch disk, as I do, then you want a2cloud.dsk. So we type that in. Now, if you haven't formatted the drive, actually, let me quickly go back to the menu. If you haven't formatted this disk, you can go F to format, and you should, and choose slot six drive one. Um, this disk is already formatted, so we don't have to. So we're going to go a2cloud.dsk. We're going to choose slot six drive one. And here it comes. So just to recap what we've done so far, we attached a keyboard and mouse and to the upper port of the Raspberry Pi, upper USB port. We attached a serial to US, a USB to serial adapter to the lower port of the Raspberry Pi and attached it to the modem port or slot two of the Apple II. Um, we then started up our Raspberry Pi with a screen attached and we started up the Raspbian desktop, and then from there, we opened the ADT Pro software and sent the bootstrap command. On the Apple II, we then typed in what we needed to to get the bootstrap started. ADT Pro was transferred from the Raspberry Pi to the Apple II, um, and now we just transferred the A2 Cloud disk. So now you're not gonna have to bootstrap again because you can just reboot and be up and running with A2 Cloud forevermore. So here you are, welcome to A2 Cloud. And if we type cat, you will see that you have VS Drive to access the virtual drive. And you have, as I showed you in the first video, and you have ADT Pro if you need ADT Pro to transfer a disk. And you have Z-Link for logging in to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, whether or not you like Z-Link or ProTerm better is a matter of preference. If you want to use ProTerm but you have an 140K drive, you can run VS Drive and then you will find ProTerm on drive two. There it is. So um, that's the deal. Uh, the, all the instructions in de detail are on the uh, A2 Cloud website. 
And again, you know, hopefully the videos help. If there's anything I can do to clarify anything or if there's a video to clarify anything, if any of this can be improved, I certainly welcome the feedback. I want this to be useful to people. The point of doing this is to make something really useful for the Apple II community using an inexpensive device, the Raspberry Pi, um, to give internet access and mass storage to even upgrade challenged Apple IIs. So uh, feedback is welcome. Ideas are welcome. I appreciate your time watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. And have fun with A2Cloud.